There may be no more a confusing product in Apple's lineup than the seventh generation iPod Touch. Released in 2019 and still selling for $200 American brand new. That price is certainly not unreasonable, but it's difficult to even find the iPod, with Apple on their website having recently removed it from the upper bar navigation. Previously, you would go to music, and then alongside AirPods, you would see the iPod, but now you have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the website and really squint to find the iPod Touch, which remains only only above accessories and gift cards. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and lately it feels like Apple has been trying their best to say what they don't actually want to say, that the iPod Touch is on its way out and won't be a part of their plans moving forward. It is possible a new iPod Touch comes out to replace the current generation, but that would surprise me. And even if it does happen, it's hard to imagine Apple actually doing a proper redesign and upgrade that would be necessary to make the iPod relevant again. That said, as it stands right now in 2022, the iPod Touch 7 is still available to buy brand new. Thus, the question inevitably arises, could it still be worth buying? And how does it hold up three years after launch? Is the iPod Touch worth buying? Probably not, no. It's difficult to outright say no because $200 isn't terrible for what you get. What you get being a fully capable Apple device running iOS 15 with relative ease. I'm gonna start this video talking about the major flaw of the iPod Touch, which is battery life, along with my suggestions concerning actually buying this device in 2022, if that's what you're looking to do. If you maybe already have one yourself or are more interested simply in how the hardware holds up and my general thoughts on it, I'll have time stamps in the description below. So why is the iPod Touch not horrible value, at least at first glance? Well, in theory, the iPod Touch can do practically almost anything the over $1,000 iPhone 13 Pro can do. It can download any app, play any game, and while it's limited in the older hardware, the actual software experience is not at all far off. It's an enticing option on paper, and it's what got me myself to buy the iPod Touch 6 generation back at its launch in 2015. That's right, we've seen this song and dance before with this iPod here, which just so happens to look identical to the current generation. Theory is one thing, but in practice, the iPod Touch is a painful experience for anyone wanting more than a basic device for music and maybe iMessage or a few games or something. I, I can see the iPod Touch still being a solid option for some, mainly kids, someone who doesn't need the actual phoning capabilities a SIM card brings, but even then, as a main driving device, it's a rough experience from the get-go. The issue here is the absolutely tiny battery, which is just barely over a thousand milliamp hours a number significantly smaller than even the first ever iPhone from 2007. Combine that with the power-hungry iOS 15 and, well, you get the picture. Battery life is bad, and unless you want to be charging it potentially multiple times per day, or are just using it for the bare minimum, it's really not much of a valid option nowadays. For music, it might work, but again, you will want a charger nearby. And there are always the standard but somewhat inconvenient options of buying a portable battery bank or battery case to go along with the iPod. Even without those, I'm sure there are users out there who are fine with the iPod as is. And that's great, if that's you, awesome. But switch to a newer iPhone and you'll immediately understand just how truly bad the iPod Touch is in the battery department. This is the same battery that was in the sixth generation iPod Touch, which was already pretty brutal in 2015. And I'm talking from personal experience here. Seven years later, with more powerful hardware, and it's uh, not surprising the seventh gen iPod Touch isn't exactly great. And the crazy thing, is we can go back even further to a full decade ago with the fifth generation iPod Touch, the final iPod redesign and one Apple has never moved on from. I don't want to dunk on the iPod too hard, but there's a reason Apple is very likely moving on. It's probably not selling too much for them anymore, and either they'll come out with an eighth generation or scrap it altogether. That eighth generation would probably be barely an upgrade again, but my money's on the latter. I think they probably just scrap it altogether. Although, then again, I said the same thing before the seventh generation came out, so at this point, who knows? Backing up a bit here, there is more to the iPod Touch than just battery life, even if it may not seem like it from what I've said thus far. In 2019, I honestly didn't think the value proposition was too bad, as you were getting basically iPhone 7 equivalent hardware for much less than even the cheapest iPhone. Mind you, the A10 chip in here is underclocked, so it won't perform as well as an iPhone 7, but even so, not too bad. Only issue, that was 2019, and the price is the same today, starting at $200, though you could potentially find sales here and there from certain retailers 
retailers. Maybe there's a better way to say this, but just don't buy the iPod Touch 7th generation. If you're looking for a cheaper iOS device, I'd recommend going all the way to the iPhone 11, which is 500 bucks off contract, which isn't cheap, but you know, it's better value than the iPod. And it actually has good battery life too, along with, you know, better camera performance, newer, bigger design, and an experience genuinely not far off from the best iPhones Apple sells today. The iPod Touch, in comparison, almost feels like a toy. And then, if you're okay with looking at the used market, our options can open up a little bit. To give us an idea of pricings, the iPod Touch 7th generation pre-owned or refurbished can be found on ebay.com for on average $100 to $150 in decent condition. I mean, if you're going higher than even $100, $200 would get you the same device but brand new. I wouldn't buy it used regardless. Apple, for some reason, doesn't allow you to see the battery health on these things in settings like they do with iPhones, meaning you don't really know what you're getting, and even if the listing says that the device is like new, the battery life could absolutely be basically shot. Not that it was ever that great to begin with, but the point stands. So the iPod is a no-go buying used, but a more budget-friendly iPhone might be a solid alternative. And without a plan, it just acts like an iPod would. The first iPhone that pops to mind is the iPhone XR, a phone that as of late 2021 is no longer being sold by Apple, but is not too far off from the price of the iPod Touch at around $250 to $300. There's a range, but I was seeing some quite nice condition devices for just over $250, and considering you'd be getting a significantly better device than the iPod Touch, even if it's used, I'd at least consider it. The XR is bigger, and thus has a bigger battery. My brother has a XR right now. He actually went from the iPod Touch 6th generation to the iPhone 6s, then to the XR, this XR that I bought a few years back for review. And what he found with each upgrade is that the battery life form got significantly better, but I'm getting off track. And the point is the iPhone XR is likely the phone to go for if you're willing to explore outside of buying brand new. So with that all out of the way, I think we can safely take a look at the iPod Touch 7th generation as it is in 2022 without any of the distractions surrounding the value or awful battery life, because at its core, this iPod does have some good to it. To start with the design, the iPod Touch is unbelievably small and compact, being insanely thin and as light as a device like this can possibly get. It's even more impressive when you remember this design was came up with in 2012. You just have to imagine what Apple could do if they actually put some effort into this device, even perhaps with an all-screen design akin to the iPhone 13 mini or something. There's just so much potential here. But regardless, this is what we have, with the classic 4-inch display and home button. That home button being the very last of its kind, and it's been like that for years now, as it lacks Touch ID and even has the iconic little square in the center of it. Not having Touch ID here is awful, and if you want any form of security, you're going to be putting in your passcode much too frequently, just like our forefathers did during the Jurassic period. The fifth generation iPod Touch was most known for one main thing when it came out 10 years ago. Colors, colors, and more colors. Bringing the first ever bright and fun colorful palette to an iOS device, not unlike what the iPod Nano had been doing in years previous. For whatever reason, Apple in 2015 decided to modify the color choices, going for a less bright but still nice selection of red, space gray, gold, silver, pink, and blue, the same colors available today on the 2019 iPod. Another hyped addition to the 5th gen iPod had been the lightning port on the bottom, something we naturally still have here, along with a headphone jack, believe it or not. The iPod joins the budget iPad in being the only iOS devices still being sold with a headphone jack, an unfortunately endangered species that likely won't last much longer as the 2020s continue. The display is small at 4 inches, the same size as the iPhone 5, 5S, and so on. It is retina though, so it's quite sharp, featuring a resolution of 1136 by 640, which makes for a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. It looks nice enough, and I've got no complaints. Plus, if it was any higher resolution, the battery life would be even worse, and trust me, no one wants that. On the back of the device, we do have a small camera bump, which is here for the 8 megapixel sensor capable of filming video in up to 1080p. This is not a good camera, even for a 3 year old device. I really wish they had at least bumped it up to 12 megapixels. It's pretty clear, or perhaps pretty blurry would be more accurate, why this camera isn't so great. Photos are noisy, grainy, blurry, and anything outside of well-lit situations tend to be a bit of a mess. If you're outdoors in sunlight or somewhere with abundant lighting, it's not too horrible, though still nowhere near even Apple's cheapest iPhone at the moment. The video is 1080p and it's bad. Also, weirdly, it can only record in up to 30 frames per second, which is strange because the iPhone 6 from 2014 with about the same camera can record 60 FPS. It doesn't really matter because again, the video is bad, but I do think this just is yet another example of how little thought and effort Apple put into this device. There should have been a 12 megapixel camera put into this thing. I know it's a $200 device, but it's still an 
Apple iOS product, and I think they should try to maintain a certain standard of quality. Even the camera from the iPhone 6S, 7, 8, anything. There's just really no excuse. There's not too much to say here, and moving to the selfie camera, somehow things get exponentially worse. We have here a painful 1.2 megapixels. 1.2, the same count as the iPhone 6, a phone that came out eight years ago in 2014, and five years before this iPod released. It's also the same selfie camera that was in the 2015 iPod Touch, which featured at the time an upgraded rear camera, but kept the same selfie camera as the 2012 iPod Touch 5th generation. So yes, a decade-old device is roughly on par in selfie quality to a 2019 iPod Touch. That's absolute garbage on Apple's part, and while I don't typically care too much about a front-facing camera, that's mainly because most iPhones at this point, even on the lower end, have a half-decent one that's more than enough for FaceTime and social media, but this one, this one somehow isn't. I mean, it'll work if need be, but gosh diddly darn is it ever horrible. Excuse my heckin' language, clearly I'm getting worked up here. This iPod, there's so much potential for Apple to make a genuinely great device here, and they just didn't in 2019, and the fact that they probably never will, it's just disappointing. It really is. Literally everything we've described so far concerning the hardware could be copied and pasted right over to a review on the 6th generation iPod Touch. So what did they even change? The answer is the processor with Apple's A10 Fusion chip, as opposed to the A8 in the previous model. There might only be two years between the chips, but the A10 is a significant upgrade to be sure. And in 2019, while I was hoping for a bit more, I was happy enough with the A10. Possibly more importantly, we have two gigabytes of RAM versus only one on the old iPod, and this does make for a much smoother iOS experience, from any app, any game, to just the basics. Multitasking, this isn't a fast device, but it's not slow either. Unfortunately, the A10 chipset here is underclocked from the iPhone 7, so while the specs look fine on paper, in practical usage, it does fall behind what the 2016 flagship is capable of. It's closer to the iPhone 6S performance-wise, and it can still run iOS 15 just like that phone. And I would hope so, considering that Apple is still selling this device, and hopefully they wouldn't be doing that if it was no longer supported by updates. So will the iPod Touch get iOS 16? We won't know until WWDC in June, but I'd wager that it probably will. If it doesn't, I would expect a quick and quiet discontinuation of the iPod from Apple's store, which maybe is what they're preparing for by already hiding it on their website, it's tough to say. The only issue is this probably would be the lowest spec device running iOS 16, assuming the iPhone success and SE won't get this update, as again, this is underclocked from the iPhone 7, so if it does get the next update this fall, I definitely wouldn't expect anything past that, so you would basically get updates till late 2023 if it does get iOS 16. And mind you, losing support isn't the end of the world for a device by any means. You'll just see over the span of two to three years, more and more apps will drop support for the older software. And beyond that, literally nothing will change, as in you won't be getting updates, so nothing will change. This iPod Touch isn't fast in 2022, but it performs fairly well thanks to the decent specs and optimization of iOS 15. If it weren't for the bad battery life, it wouldn't be the worst option in the world, especially if you were able to buy it on sale. But it's absolutely not worth it, as is, unless it somehow really just perfectly fits whatever you need it for. For a music player, this is a decent device, and there are a number of storage options, 32 gigs at $200, 128 at 300 and 256 gigs at 400 Unfortunately, anything more than 32 gigs here seems like an absolute ripoff, but those options are there if you enjoy wasting money. The reality is most people like to stream music nowadays anyways, but if you are one of the few still clinging to downloaded audio, I'd recommend trying to track down an old iPod classic, as it would likely do a lot better for you. I really strongly recommend checking out the website Elite Obsolete Electronics, I'll have it in the description. I'm not sponsored, but I am fairly close with the owner Austin, and he's a great guy. He's got a serious collection of any iPod you could possibly want, and you can even custom order an iPod in your preferred colors and everything. The battery life, storage, and practicality will all be significantly greater than going with a current iPod Touch, and the only real sacrifice is the lack of Bluetooth support. But back to the subject on hand. The iPod Touch in 2022 is an anomaly. It's strange that it even still exists in any form, because clearly, Apple wants you to forget that it ever even happened. Maybe they'll surprise me and do a genuine upgrade to the line this year or next. Maybe they'll do yet another minor spec bump, or maybe, most likely, they'll finally discontinue it. But for now, it's stuck in constant purgatory, and will no doubt continue to disappoint those who buy it as any kind of main device. There might be certain niches the iPod can fit into, and you yourself might be using one and enjoying it right now, and that's great, but that doesn't make it worth it for someone who doesn't have one yet, and so for the vast majority of people out there, I just cannot recommend the iPod Touch in 2022 
2022. You're so much better going off with a used iPhone or old iPod, depending on what you need. And so with that, I think I'm right about done here. I really don't like talking this way about the iPod. Apple just needs to upgrade it or get rid of it, really. And unfortunately, again, I think it's gonna be just get rid of it. So we'll see what happens. But for now, if you found this video helpful or interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're into tech. You can follow me over on social medias at 91 underscore tech. With that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.